Greetings everyone, uh, this is the Geekish. Today we're going to learn CorelDRAW from scratch. So um, for those who have never used CorelDRAW, uh, the first thing I'll do is um, you have to download CorelDRAW or get an installation file from whatever source you have. Uh, so as you can do that, you can feel free to pause the video. But as you do that, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. So uh, as you pause, once you're ready with your Corel Draw, you can resume the video. Yes, uh, so open your Corel Draw. So to start with, we'll uh, explore all the tools that we have on Corel Draw, and we'll also explore the menu bar. So firstly, if you open your Corel Draw, uh, you can see uh, either it has a page, a welcome page. That is several options or it will be blank like mine so in this case uh, I can hover my mouse to to, to where it's written file so file then uh, new then uh, as you can see it gives you the create a new document uh, panel that that, that that comes out so on the name you have to name your file whatever you want to name it so in this case I'll say my first Corel. So not spaces are, are allowed. You you do whatever you want. If you want to space your stuff, uh, that uh, is no problem. So um, don't change anything else. Just change the name. And for now, you're going to leave the number of pages on one. And uh, the primary color mode CYMK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and uh, black. We're not using RGB. Uh, then the dimensions for now you can leave it uh, as it is then uh, the width everything else leave them as they are then the color settings leave as it is so after that you hit ok so now there we go we have our first code document but now as you can see this is a blank document but it brings us a new page a new setup all together so as you can see uh, we will start by exploring the, 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 the menu bar. So hover your mouse to the top left. So the first thing we have is file. Let's click on file. So this is where we can create a new file. Then we can also create a new file from a template. We can also use this tab to open a new document or any existing document from our computer. Then also we have that open recent now this is where you find your recently created uh, corel draw files and you can also close your file your your file from this close tab or you can also close every tab that is open on corel then there is save as let's click save as so as you click save as it brings you uh, a new window and then in this new window one it gives you the file name so the first thing you verify if a file name is correct and also not one thing on the file name there is the dot cdr don't remove that that extension that's the one that tells our computer that this is a CorelDRAW file so i need to use CorelDRAW to open the file so um that's on file name then save as type just below file name this is now where you choose whether you want to save it as a CorelDRAW file or you want to save it as a pdf or a whole lot more uh, options but normally we use PDF which is Adobe Portable document format and we also use CorelDRAW that is if we then want to re-edit our stuff we have to save it as Corel but for print we can save it as PDF then the next thing uh, you can save is as uh, Adobe Illustrator some people use that those who know how to use Adobe then the other thing is you also need to save some files as a JPEG or JPG so if you scroll there are a lot of other formats that you can save but in this case we're not saving our files anything yet and also on this save tab there is another important thing if you hover your mouse to towards the bottom right you see where it is written version so I'm using CorelDRAW 2019, so it saves my version as 21.0. But if you click on that, you see different other versions. So if you're using CorelDRAW, um, for example, X, X, X7, you're supposed to save your files um, 
17.0. So this is what happens with versions. You could use a higher version, but someone with a lower version cannot open that file. So what you do is, if you want to print or if you want to edit the document anywhere else, you have to save as a lower version. So I always advise you to save a 17.0 because almost every designer in town is Corodro X7. So uh, after you have done everything, you can then click save. But in this case, we don't want to save as yet. We'll, we'll then go to cancel. So that's the first tab, which is file. Then the next one, we'll go to edit. Now edit, uh, this is um, kind of um, where you find options like undo, redo, repeat, cut, copy, paste, paste special, delete, clone. But in this case, we're not uh, using it as yet. But the moment you put something on the uh, on the screen, so let's just uh, experiment. Let's put a rectangle. So uh, I draw my rectangle. Uh, let's say I color it. Um, so if I go back to edit, as you can see, my undo is now uh, functional. Same as my repeat fill. Same as cut. Same as copy, delete, duplicate, uh, clone, select all, find and replace. So you can only use edit when there is something on your page uh the next step we have is view so view is basically uh where you zoom in your page you zoom out your page you can view it as full screen you can uh view uh, rulers and grid lines and 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 all other stuff so uh for now we're not using view as yet uh, but you will see more then you go on layout now this is where you can insert a page where you can duplicate a page you can rename a page and uh for example let's say you're creating a document with so many pages you can actually rename this page uh if you click rename it brings you that uh, so let's say uh, rename it to page one then you press ok so if you over your mouse to the uh, to the bottom left you see it's now renamed to page one so um then uh, we go into object there are several other options on object like creating and setting something new but you will see more as we go into into the actual designing then effects this is where you get your brightness this is where you get your 3d effects your adjustments and uh, many other things uh, then the next thing is a bitmap we normally use this to convert our images to bitmap because this is what happens whenever you bring an image on Corel Draw, for it to be editable as an image, for you to 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 to, to apply certain effects that only apply to images, you need to change it to a bitmap. Then I uh, go on text. This is where you do your basic text formatting, like the tab, the columns, the bullets, the dropping cap, and many other things. Then a uh, table, this is for creating new tables and inserting other things like rows and columns. Then tools, this is where you actually select the tools that you want to use. So like in this case, if I click on tools, then options, suppose I want to customize the look uh, of my uh, Corel from uh, this dark mode, I can always come to options, then on the drop down I can choose uh, customization. So as you can see, on my customization there is appearance. Uh, suppose if I uh, want to change from dark, I just come on theme. So as you can see there is the dark theme there's the light theme there's the medium theme uh, so in this case let me pick uh, the light theme so as you can see it has changed my theme from that black into this light theme which is actually more visible so I think for this uh, tutorial we're going to use the light theme uh, then I'll go back to my dark theme later on so I press ok I now have the light theme so the next thing is uh, we go to window now this is where you can change the workspace uh, for example I want to change from uh, default to light so as you can see by default uh, it's on default but I can change it to light so notice something whenever you change your screen the, the window type uh, I've changed it to light. Look, it has changed the whole setup. I some of the tools are now hidden. So let me go back to default. So window workspace uh, default. Let's see if it brings back my stuff. So as you can see everything is back 
in play so uh, on Yelp this is where you find about the product uh, video tutorials means uh, updates uh, you need to know more about Corel this is where you actually go on help so we're done with the menu bar and just below the menu bar there is a uh, this uh, part I'd, I'd want to call it a menu bar but represented by icons so you can see the first icon if you move around it uh, it's written new so this is for creating a new document so either you can click that icon if you want a new document or you can hit uh, control um, N for a new document then the next icon it's for opening a document if you go on the drop down you can see you can open all the recently uh, uh, created documents then the next icon we all know the save icon it works the same way it works in word it works the same way it works in every other software that I've used so you can also open a Corel from Corel cloud that is if you store your documents or on cloud and you can also upload to Corel cloud or you can save your Corel documents on the internet uh, then the next thing you can save you can print you can do all sorts of things uh, and for now I think we'll be done with that tab then below that uh, icons tab you you, you see uh, there's um, to your far left there's where it is written later this is where you change your page size so in this case uh, let's say we don't want to work with later we want to work with a4 you just click on the drop down you pick a4 so as you can see our, ch our page has changed we now have an a4 page which is in landscape uh, you move your mouse as you can see these are the dimensions for an a4 then next uh, you can see this portrait and landscape so I can change this a4 to landscape I can change it to portrait anytime depending on the design that I want then from there uh, I think we're done with that then we go to the tools so um listen closely now this is the tools bar and your best friend when you're dealing with Corel Draw has to be the pick two which is the topmost uh, two so as you can see if I pick the pick two I uh, suppose let me just put some uh, rough sketch uh, stuff on the uh, on the screen so you use the pick tool to select the object that you actually want to edit so in this case suppose i want to edit uh, the this uh, rectangle i first have to take my pick tool then i can click on the rectangle after you picked that rectangle i can change anything i can change the colors i can right click and then delete it i can hide it i can do whatever I want with it so in this case I want to delete it and also I want to delete this one so your pick two is the your best friend in Corel Draw because you can't edit anything if you haven't picked it so uh, below the pick two we have the shape two now this shape two is used to uh, create several, several different shapes from uh, the polygons from uh, circles whatever you want but with the shape two uh, let's dwell on this a bit more suppose i have a rectangle a four-sided rectangle and this is a polygon right a four-sided polygon uh suppose it's in uh, red i want to change this to a five-sided or let's say uh, i want to change it to a six-sided uh, polygon what what we can do is uh you can right click on the rectangle and convert it to curves so you can't see any difference as yet but as you convert it to curves you take your shape to it's taking your shape to suppose we say we want uh, eight uh, different uh, sides so if you hover your mouse to any of the lines so let's suppose I hover my mouse here and I double click I have created a node so you can also double click here i've created another node i can also double click here that's another node another double click for another node so if you come to these nodes now if i drag this node outside i actually have another side suppose i drag this node outside i now have another side i can also drag this one so as you can see i now have one two three four five six seven eight sides from just a rectangle so this is the beauty of the shape too and uh, back to our rectangle the other ways you can use a shape to um, suppose 
I don't want this to be a straight line. I want to be curved. Uh, I want to create a wave. Suppose I'm designing a business card or a flyer. So I want a wave that, that, that looks really beautiful. I can uh, click on my object. Convert it to caves, right click, convert it to caves. So in this case, it's already in caves. So I take my shape to, so suppose I want to, uh, on, uh, I want to change this line into a cave. What you do is hover your mouse to that line. And the moment you see a black arrow and uh, uh, an S like, you right click, then you uh, select to cave on the drop down. So now you can drag inside you see the beauty of the shape too you now have a totally different shape so you can use this to create any other object uh, that, that, that that is required of you so that's uh, about the shape too so far but before we leave the shape too uh, suppose we still have this rectangle and we 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 don't want the corner uh, these corners we want them to be curved in a stylish way you can also take a shape too without converting anything to caves you uh, take your shape to go to any corner then drag the corners inside so as you can see i have something like an oval from a rectangle so ladies and gentlemen that's the beauty of the shape too then from there we go to the crop tool the crop tool works uh, the same way every other tool has worked the same way the crop tool has worked in microsoft publisher the same way you've used it anywhere else so uh, suppose i have my rectangle i want to crop it you just take the crop tool and you drag click and drag suppose i want this part the highlighted part you can either click crop already i have my object cropped exactly uh, then on the crop tool as you can see there is a triangle the, uh, which is a drop down we have different other shapes like the knife tool the segment delete the eraser suppose i want the knife tool just click the knife and cut your object if i do this already i've cut this into two objects uh, click away so as you can see i can now move these objects separately they have been cut so there's the knife too let's use the same way you use a knife at your home so i can also pick um, on the same drop down i can pick an eraser too so i, I want to re erase this for example you see i have managed to erase and i now have some white spaces so this is the beauty of coral draw uh -huh. so from there we go into the zoom tool this just like a little circle zooming is zooming uh, suppose we have uh, our object we're working with a very small object and we can't really read some of the text you can take your zoom tool so as you can see my zoom tool is on 36 percent you can change it to whatever percentage you want i've zoomed my page to 10 percent let's say i zoom it to 200 you see it's now big i can't even see it uh be zoomed to 50 percent i can't see the whole page so you zoom to whatever percentage that you want so uh, that's your zoom tool so you can zoom in zoom out how to zoom in you just click on the object you zoom in suppose i want to zoom out you over your mouse to the top you see that uh circle with a minor side inside then you click that's zooming out so that's your zoom then from there we go on to the next two which is uh, the free end tool this one uh, you basically use it to draw stuff so if you're good at drawing uh, suppose you want to draw a car let me do let me do my own car um you forgive me because i didn't grow up with cows but anyway i'll try my best so um this is my car don't judge my car but uh as far as i know this is my car so you can use this to draw be artistic draw whatever you want uh but uh we I normally don't use the, 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 the dust tool because I was never a fan of drawing since primary. So back to that free end. This way you can also create straight lines like this two point line. You just click your first point and you don't release the mouse. You click and drag. Then you release at the end of the line. So we now have a straight line. Also, um, we have uh, the beezer. 
you can use it to draw certain uh, angles certain uh, curved shapes uh, from there you have the pen too this is my favorite too but for now we're not using it for anything but here's what happens with pen too you create coordinates you just click release click release click release click release so you can draw anything as long as the sides are going to be so straight you can draw anything with the pen too and after you're done double click to release your pen but we'll learn more in, in the next tutorials and then we have the b sheet b spile uh, this one you use it to create uh, semicircles and all that or you can even use it to create a circle after you're done you double click you have your shape uh, i don't want that i delete it then from there we have uh, the polyline the 3d cave you need to experiment with all that then from there we have the artistic media now this media it's really artistic you see you just click it and drag i have something that looks like a pencil i have something that looks all weird stuff but you can also change uh the 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 the, the, the the shape uh, if you move over your mouse the preset stroke in fact if you move a mouse to the top you see uh this is where you get different shapes uh, suppose you want this broken like thing you draw it you see i don't know with whatever design you want play around with it to, to to be able to create something from there we have the rectangle too uh, I use the rectangle tool for creating everything. I use it for creating squares, for creating different shapes. I even use it to create a triangle. Although there is a triangle tool, I, I, I would love to create a triangle using a rectangle tool. Um, this rectangle, you, you just need to convert it to curves and use your shape to, to create whatever sorts of things that you want. So on the rectangle tool, um, it was only the rectangle and below that there is the ellipse uh, in, uh, in a layman's language let's just call it a circle uh, so you, 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 you have a circle you need to draw a logo with a circle uh, you just draw your circle you type your stuff and uh, that's your logo uh, this beautiful company it's got a yellow logo yeah that's uh, how your circle works from there let's go to the poly on to so now you click the polygon to as you can see if you drag and uh, on your page just to um, create your, your, your shape you can change the sides like in this case that by default it's got five sides but I suppose I want as many sides you can change over your mouse to the top you see uh, where it's written five change that you can change it even to a triangle you can change it to whatever you want uh, I have a kite like delete um, on the polygon we also have different other shapes if you click on the drop down we have a star we have uh, this star you can also change the number of uh, sides and uh, we, we also have a spiral we have uh, common shapes if you click on common shapes this is where you find uh, several other shapes uh, if you hover your mouse to the top uh, you see they are basic shapes we have a cross we have a magnetic like we have so many things arrows flow charts banners call outs and all that uh, so that's all on the polygon we also have an impact tool we have a graph paper experiment go on and experiment with these things and below that we have um, an a which basically represents our text too so our text too suppose i want to type uh, my mother is so sweet is so sweet you have to take your text too and you can type whatever you want then um from there you have a parallel dimension uh, this one uh, for the, those of you who are good at drawing maps uh, good at drawing plans this is your friend from there we have uh, the, the, the drop shadow too so this is what happens you've seen uh, many pictures of a shadow of themselves um, many texts so suppose I want a shadow on my mother this sweet I want a shadow on this text I can type my text 
then we say the best friend you have is uh, your P2. So click on my mother's suite. You come in, you take your drop shadow too. Then you click and drag downwards. So as you can see, we have a shadow to our text. So as you can see, the shadow is a different color. But anyway, we have a shadow. Play around with it. From there, we have um, transparency too. So uh, suppose I have my rectangle, it's an a blue, but I feel it's too thick. I, I need probably my mother is sweet to be seen. My mother to be seen behind this uh, rectangle. So if I drag and drop, suppose it was behind the rectangle, I can change the tra transparency of the rectangle. Click on the transparency too. Is it move over your mouse? towards the object that you want to be transparent suppose i want uh, it to be on 57 you see it's still blue but it's transparent again i can read my my mother is so sweet yes from there we have a uh, color eyedropper uh this one you can use it to pick uh, different colors uh, suppose i want a uh, red rgb whatever i want that's where you can use the color eyedropper so like in this case you pick the color you click on the object changes the color uh, from there we have an interactive field tool so the interactive field tool this is what happens uh, is used to create uh, a document or an object that is two different colors so suppose we want it uh, to have uh, blue and green uh, let's color um, let's color back uh, 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 rectangle so it's got green initially but we want to have two colors so you take your interactive field to over your mouse to the top so as you can see um, there is a no fill the second icon is uniform fill which is the one that we have then there is the fountain fill so in this case we want a fountain fill so you click your fountain fill so you can see uh, it has given us two colors already, green and white. So for the green one, this is it's coming from this uh, rectangle or square. So if you click on that node, you can pick the colors that you want. So we say we want red and blue. So I have my red. So you come to the white rectangle or the white node. You click and you can pick your blue color. So that's it. We now have our red and blue. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, just a brief about our Corel Draw. So in our next uh, tutorial, we're going to learn how to use all these objects. Uh, suppose in designing one object, uh, let's say a flyer. Um, in fact, our next objective is to design a flyer. So don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to follow all these tutorials. Also share with your friends. Otherwise, it's a bye-bye.